At this time, let us begin our April 21st, 2021 Wednesday night service with prayer. Father God, full of love and grace, for the past three days, while we were living in this world that's filled with much dangers and darkness, you have kept us as the apple of your eye. And in your attention, you have allowed us to be able to come before you in this worship on this Wednesday night filled with spirit and in truth. And even though we're starting to see uh, the end towards this pandemic, help us so that we will never lose our faith. And may we be able to experience the fiery love of your grace and help us to live each and every day, continuing continuing on in this experience. If there are those who are suffering from problems of their lives, their health, their families, their schools, or their business, at this time, through this worship, may they be able to have a fiery meeting with you, and may there be a work of healing as we experience your hands of healing, and may we find liberation from all of our problems, Help us to experience this kind of night of healing. At this time, as the word is proclaimed, may the Holy Spirit work mightily within us. May we not lose one word or have it fall to the ground, but may we inscribe this upon our hearts and find victory for the remainder of this week. We thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our bread of life is found in Psalm 147, verses 15 through 18. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He showers snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls his ice as fragments. Who can stand before his cold? He sends his word and makes them melt. He makes his wind blow, and the waters flow. This is the Word of God. Amen. Our title today is Let the Word Run Through Me. And with this, I pray you will receive much grace. The scripture reading we have read today expresses the dramatic attributes of God's Word. The word can run swiftly, causing snow to shower like white wool and ashes to drop like frost. And with just his word, he can cause all the ice and snow he sends on this earth to melt. Since this is so, What can we learn regarding the attributes of the Word of God? And at this time, let us learn together so we can be those who run swiftly as the Word. Number one, when we believe in the Word, it begins to run in us. We know that God created all things in the universe, including mankind, just by his word. However, because Adam and Eve, the two representatives of humankind, disobeyed the word and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they lost the word of God that was once in them, and therefore lost God's spirit and became fallen and corrupted. Romans 8 verse 21 says that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In other words, after the fall of Adam, the word no longer had a place on this earth.
But there is a way to regain this lost word. It is to once again believe in the word of God, to truly believe in it. We do this when the word is being proclaimed and we receive it with faith. Our heart takes in the word and then the word finds its place in us again. In Hebrews 4.2, the Bible records, For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. If the word we take is not accepted with faith, then the word is of no use to us. If we do not believe in the word, then we can never run with it. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 records, When you received from us the word of God's message, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Those of us that accept the word and believe it, as if it came from God, are the ones who run with the word, because the word carries them up. This is also the same reason why the Jews ostracized Jesus when he came to earth in the flesh. John 8, 37 says, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. From this verse, we know that they did not accept the word from Jesus and worse than blocking the word, they completely rejected it. This caused the halting of the word, as it was not able to move or run, and therefore Jesus himself could not swiftly evangelize. So today, when we hear the word, let us not block it or reject it. Let us receive it with faith. Let us run with it. And in that way, we are able to train ourselves to run for God's will for the rest of our lives. Training is likened in the Bible as the process in which wine is put into a leather bag. Matthew 9, 17 records, nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wineskins burst, and the wine pours out, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. New wine is distinctly acidic in content, and therefore expands the leather skin bags quickly this new wine represents the dynamic character of the word that was brought to this earth by Jesus. This was the new word that Jesus brought. And the new leather bags of the heart was to expand quickly with this word. But how was this new word supposed to run swiftly? The leather bags the people, people's hearts that carried this new word had to be flexible and expand just as fast as this new word did. The old leather bags of their old hearts had to be switched to new bags. They had to have a new heart to contain this new wine of the word. The Bible points to the character of the old leather bag, the old heart that can't contain the new wine, the new word. The character of those who cannot hold the new word is evil or wicked. Jeremiah 2.13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. 
this broken cistern symbolizes the old leather bag, the heart that bursts and becomes useless because they can't or refuse to contain the Word of God. Since this is so, who is this old leather wineskin or old leather bag of today who has become the broken cistern? Small number one, it is the habitual churchgoer merely attending due to formalities. They live a superficial life of faith who worships every week. They listen to the word and then they go home and unimpressed. The word has no meaning for them, and in their hearts and minds, they become stiffer and older, as it is described in the book of the Bible, Romans 1.21. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. In the end, these hardened hearts that cannot expand, their hearts reject God and their hearts become dark. Small number two. The old leather bag of today is a person who does not reflect upon the word. They are the ones who have an old broken cistern of a heart. The word of God is not something that you listen to just once and forget about it. It must permeate in your ears, mind and heart that is why many believers take notes so that they won't forget the word when they receive it. We must reflect on the word in order to engrave it deeply in our hearts. And when we do this, it moves our lives dynamically. Deuteronomy 6 verses 6 through 9 says, And these words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lay down and when you rise up and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates When we take the word to heart and diligently teach it to our families, our children, then it will be a blessing to us. And everyone who receives this word and everyone who takes note and writes it upon their hearts, those people who learn from the word will receive blessings. This means that when we hear the word or read the Bible or the history of redemption books, we must take notes. We need to do this in order to meditate on the word over and over again. If we do not, then we will forget the word that we have received. During the time of the early church, there were those who deeply meditated on the word. They were the Bereans. The members of the church of Thessalonica were also good receivers of the word, as it was described in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, when you receive from us the word of God's message, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. 
They did not take the word as if it came from a man, but as it came directly from God. These were the people of the church of Thessalonica, but the people of Berea, they concentrated even more than the Thessalonians. In Acts 17, 11, the Bible records, now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Not only did the Bereans concentrate on the word they heard, but they also continued to reflect upon it. Like this, the Bereans became these new leather bags with new hearts that could receive this new wine, the new word by faith. And when this happened, what occurred? The word exerted a powerful expansion of force and growth. And with this momentum of the word, it caused people to run swiftly for the word, by the word. Like the Bereans, we must be the people with these new hearts, with these new wineskins that can hold this word. When we do this, then we too will be people who run swiftly and boldly for the word. And with this word, all problems will be resolved. All obstacles will be removed. So we, could, so we can continue to run swiftly with the word. May we all experience this explosive power in ourselves, our health, our families, our children, and our futures. May we have this explosive power in every aspect of our lives. Hebrews 4.12 records, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. In what word? God's word is power. It makes us strong. It fixes everything in our lives. May we have this type of spiritual surgery that fixes all the broken things in our lives. May we be able to run swiftly with this word. At this time, may we go beyond the practice of the believers in the early church of Thessalonica by deeply reflecting upon the word we receive and concentrate on increasing our faith. May we be able to take this word home and reflect upon it by taking notes and earnestly meditating on the word of God like the people of Berea. And may we share this word with our family and run swiftly with it. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Big number two. As we share the word with others, it will move swiftly. When the things of this world are divided, its value becomes reduced. But when the word of God is divided and given to others, its grace and power moves and grows 10, 30, 100 fold. Acts 2, 41 through 42 records this. So then, those who had received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls, and they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. When we teach the word and give it out to others, 
we grow in numbers. This is the power of the word that was able to add 3,000 souls in one day. And in Acts 2, 46-47, the Bible records, And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Fellowship in the word and the revival of the church are always connected. Why? because they are able to run swiftly with the word and gather others to it. In order to accomplish the will of God and spread the word, Jesus devoted himself to a public ministry for three years. And even during the Last Supper, Jesus tried to share the word of the new wine, the new word with his 12 disciples. He wanted to divide this word to his disciples. Luke twenty-two seventeen records, And we, when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. Here, Jesus wanted to give the word, share the word with the disciples. And in Luke 22, verse 20, the Bible records, and in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup containing the new word, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Thus, when we begin to run with the word, the second process is to share the word with others. From now on, let us not keep the grace and word that we have received to ourselves, but let us share it with our community of faith. And may the word that we receive run swiftly to others. I pray that the living word of God will run mightily, not only in our own personal lives and homes, but to our entire church community so that we can bear the blessed fruits, the amazing fruits of revival. May this happen. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. And lastly, number three. When we evangelize, the word will cover the entire earth. What will happen when we share this world to the unbelievers of this world? The river of the word will run across the world and devour the seas of sin. These are the seas of sin that overflow with waves of pain and death. And when this word runs across the world, the history of redemption will be raised up. Ezekiel 47, eight through nine says, Then he said to me, These waters go out toward the eastern region and go down into the Arabah. Then they go toward the sea, being made to flow into the sea, and the waters of the sea become fresh. And it will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. And there will be very many fish, for these waters go there, and the others become fresh, so everything will live where the river goes. Here, this water, it refreshes all the dead. The Dead Sea becomes fresh. And Zechariah 14.8 records, 
And it will come about in that day that living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea. It will be in summer as well as in winter. These are talking about the waters of the word. And the prophet Isaiah expressed the finality of the history of redemption as follows. Isaiah 11.9 records the following. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here in the end, they're talking about how the waters will cover over the dirty seas. Waters here is expressed in the plural form, mime. And the sea in Hebrew, mam, is expressed in its singular form. This means that the dirty sea of this world, which is represented as a singular one thing, will be covered by waters clean waters. The waters that cover the sea that is considered clean water is more than one water. This means that covering the dirty sea with this clean water is not a work where only one person can accomplish it. This is a mission that needs to be fulfilled by many people. We all need to do the work in spreading the gospel and in spreading the history of redemption so we can cover the sinful world with the cleansing power of the word. Romans 3 verses 1 through 2 records, What advantage then is there in being a Jew, or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. Thus God made you and I into spiritual Jews that can be entrusted with the word of the gospel, the word of Christ, and the word of the history of redemption. By faithfully receiving this word, may the precious missions that we are entrusted with, may we overflow and run with this word first. Then we can spread it to others to build up our community of faith. May we diligently go out and cover this entire world with the gospel of the word. May we have this great faith to run with this word. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, today on this Wednesday worship, you have allowed us to come forth before you and you have told us that we must run with your word. And we are thankful for this word. May the word run through us. And even though we live in this world, busy with all the things we must do, we lay down all these things before you to once again listen to the word again, to have it held faithfully in our hearts so that we may be able to firmly and boldly run with this word and be people of your word. And with the word, may we be able to share it and divide it with others. And may those people be also be enabled to run with your word. And may we cover the dirty sea of this world with the clean waters of your word. May we be blessed with this type of blessing. And with this word, May it revive all the dead things in our lives, whether it be our families, our businesses, our health, our possessions. May we receive an amazing blessing filled with your glory and grace. We believe in this, and we pray in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us give glory to God. 
Let us sing hymn number 342. will now pray for the offering. Loving Father God, we thank you. Today, we have come before you to keep this Wednesday night worship with you. And with this word that we have received, may we have a, a renewed heart where we want to repent for our sins and may we never take the word for granted, but may we take this word and truly be able to run with your word and use it as a sword and a shield in our lives. Because we are thankful for the word we have received, we want to give our offerings to you. We pray that you will receive our offerings with true happiness, and may we be able to make material possessions in this world without trouble. We thank you and we pray in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is time for announcements. With this word that we have received, let us receive a new heart. And even though we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, please do not be worried. But let us be able to hold on to this word and run swiftly. Let us rise and we will end our Wednesday night service with hymn number one and benediction. Man boge kudon hadarim 
온 백성 찬송 드리고 저 천사여 찬송하세 찬송 성부 성자 성령 아 Today, we want to thank you for this word. May you accept our offerings and our tithes with all the prayer requests and our thanksgiving that we offer to you. May these offerings glorify your name. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the abundant and eternal love of our Father God and the fellowship and inspiration of the Holy Spirit be upon all of your heads here today. May we be able to boldly go forward with your word and run swiftly and may this blessing rest upon you, your families, your businesses, your schools, this church, the nations and its people from now until eternity. Amen. Our Wednesday night worship has now ended. May you have a peaceful night. Thank you.